Hi everyone. This tutorial is going to focus on alcohol ink design incorporating a craft foil or deco foil, which is one of the brand names. I just keep my used foil in a bag and for projects like this, so that's what I'll be using. I have a number of different UPOs um, to show you, a couple by Ranger, the last two are by Legion. Uh, and for this particular, and that's a large one, a large pad, this particular project I'm going to use the 5x7 Legion synthetic uh, UPO paper. And it looks just like that. There's no right side or wrong side when it comes to UPO paper, um, but uh, a few other tools that you'll want would be the paper towel, the spritzing tool by Ranger is handy uh, to use as a blowing tool, uh, this is isopropyl or rubbing alcohol, 91%. I've put some in this small travel shampoo container for easy dispensing. And there's also a mini mister by Ranger, which has the isopropyl alcohol in it. Just a spritzer. I won't be using it for this particular project, but I may use it in future. And it's handy to have. The alcohol blending solution will be required. And the hand sanitizer, though not required, is certainly handy because it takes ink off of your hands uh, and can also clean your hands really well so that you don't get any um, oils from your hands or, and I'm flicking off a couple of things there, um, onto the UPO because that will act as a resist and the ink won't stick where there's any oil. So I use that hand cleanser. The inks I'll use today would be Ranger Eggplant, which is this purple that I'm putting down. Very, very deep pigmented ink. And the second one that you see is uh, Pinata by Jacquard, and the color is called uh, Calabasa Orange. So I'm going to mix, um, I put some alcohol, rubbing alcohol on that sheet, enough that I can handle it, manage it easily. And as you'll see, I'm just using my hands to effectively move the ink around. The alcohol is breaking the pigments down. The paper towel comes in very handy. <laughs> and really what I'm doing, because the ink is going to dry fairly quickly, as is the rubbing alcohol, is I'm just making the best use of gravity. And I'm watching as the colors pull apart. And this particular very dark eggplant purple breaks down into some kind of cool blues and even pinks, which you'll see as time goes on. And I'm, in this case, I'm, I'm not trying to make it do anything in particular other than give reasonable coverage. If you want to cover your page from square to square, corner to corner, you can do that. Uh, the ink tends to, as you'll see on that lower corner, it kind of rolls along the edge which can give you an advantage. Um, it will dribble off, as you saw earlier, so you have to kind of manage that as well. And as you see, I've, I've kind of indented the card. I have rather large lady hands, <laughs> so I can hold this five by seven fairly easily in one hand, um, but I will bend it back and forth as I need to. Now I've taken that spritzing tool. This is actually used for uh, felt markers, which is why it's got that little screw area on the, the uh, channel of the barrel that would hold the marker and very simple tool, no electricity required and it just helps move the ink around a little bit because I'm trying to, as I said, sort of a, get a background happening uh, before I lay down any other bright colors and as you'll see that deep purple has broken down there's still some deep purple left, but a lot of it's broken down because of the alcohol into uh, tones of pink and blue. You can leave your alcohol inks open uh, for a fairly long time. I just like to be in the habit of shutting them. I wouldn't so suggest you leave your um, rubbing alcohol or the blending solution open for very long. And before I add the orange, I'm putting a few drops of the blending solution and the blending solution is needed for this particular project, which involves using that um, craft foil, because the blending solution combined with uh, the ink, um, and it would do, I'm sure it would, would work the same if it was just the ink alone, but the blending solution combined with the ink is going to um, have the effect, as you'll see there, of creating some heavily pigmented 
uh, darker areas, those tend to be the areas where the pigment and the blending solution have, have gathered, if you will, um, although the blending solution for the most part evaporates. Uh, where those dark places are, are going to be the areas that I will look to as the tacky or glue areas, and those will be the areas that I'll concentrate on uh, when I'm going to put the foil on it, which will be the very last stage. And so I've dropped on some of the Calabasa orange, and I had just before that put down some of the blending solution and the drips drips are drips and sometimes they look really great um, you can get some very good effects with the the drips because they give you a uh, shadow and light which is a nice contrast and depending on how you treat it there I've just dropped in some more of the blending solution and I'll put some of the calabasa orange again on top And in fact, I didn't start this project thinking that it was going to be any one thing in particular. Uh, I'm always very happy if something turns out to look much like a floral. And I didn't know how likely that was going to be with an orange. But we'll see as time goes on. And then I just keep moving this piece around and letting gravity do its thing and keeping my eyes open just to sort of get an idea of what it looks like it might be forming. It's an abstract, so it might look like something to me and not necessarily to you. And I'm sorry I'm holding it out of camera range, but I'm trying to keep it as close as I can uh, so that I can see what's happening at the same time. And that just looks like a hot mess right there. Actually, there's some areas along the left where my left hand's holding it that look kind of interesting. And the reason I said it's a hot mess, and you see what I'm doing to alleviate that a bit, is that there's been a lot of brown, really dark brown formed. And that, <clears throat> pardon me, is a consequence of the mixture of the orange, which tends to then mix with the purple, which has red in it, and, and generally you get some kind of a brown with most any combination of colors, but purple and orange... Um, are very good at forming brown. So there'll, there'll be some darker places on this piece once it's finished, but um, I welcome the darker places as well. I don't want it to be all light because it's not as interesting and I like the dark to represent shadow. So what I did was brought in Dandelion Arranger ink. Very, very bright, beautiful color. And as I pop that over on top of the existing inks, you'll see that it displaces all the ink below it. And then I thought, well, I don't want this just to be a bunch of circles. Um, and this is the beauty of the sink as well. And because the, the applicator is just a tiny um, little opening, I decided to make some long, narrow kind of stripes, if you will, or um, just moving those shapes together. And then I'm go going back to really just moving that piece around and letting gravity pull the inks together and then removing any of the ink that pulls up that I feel is just a bit too dark. Not a lot of ink that I've removed really, uh, but it just was in places where it was settling kind of in an odd way. So I've taken a look at it, and I get a bit of a floral look. So I think, well, I'm going to complete that feel by just adding more yellow and connecting sort of to make a ring, if you will, of yellow. And then to get the depth, which would be the center of the flower, if that's how you saw it, and that's how I saw it at that moment, I put in more of the eggplant. And it spreads out beautifully and in a natural looking way. It's organic, it's not a, a perfect circle, which is really what I wanted it to be. It was, it was imperfect and organic. And so as I'm just letting that ink move around and dry, I'm 
looking at a few things. Do I want to add more ink? Is it pooling up in places where I could add some foil and make a difference? And the flower uh, appearance to me doesn't go away as I turn it around. So what I've chosen to do is use some very bright green foil and to put it in areas where there would be stammer leaves maybe. It also happens to be where there, there's ink um, that's piled up a bit and it's become tacky. So there you can see, and it's like adhering a bandage and then pulling it off. It's that kind of tension, only the picture doesn't get hurt. And so I'm effectively putting it down with the color side up. I mean the foil, laying it down on top of the image where the ink has pooled up and then pulling the foil back. And if the ink's too wet, it's just gonna pull up a little bit of ink on the foil, which doesn't hurt anything. Uh, if it's tacky, and it won't be tacky for long, by the way, the tackiness, uh, you know, as soon as it dries, it's gone. You've lost your opportunity, at least for that moment. You can, you can certainly, if you uh, miss the opportunity for tackiness, you can take some of the blending solution and add it to the areas that you had intended to foil. And so what I'm doing is I'm avoiding the yellow part of the flower. I really just want it to be in around the edges that I add any of the green. Just so that in, you know, when, it, when you squint your eyes and look at it, you see some of the green that might be the leaves in the background. It's not really meant to be more than just a, a highlight. And there you have it. And that is my my bright flower image with the green foil. And that's a wrap. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll leave a still here so that you can take a closer look at the final outcome. And thanks for joining me.